do you listen to music through loudspeakers? If you do, you'll want to pay strict attention to this video because today we are going to talk once again about one of my favorite topics, room acoustics. Now it's an inconvenient truth for some people that the room is the most important component in any loudspeaker system. As my acoustics expert friend Yesko Lohan says, when you listen via loudspeakers, you are hearing more room than speaker. This episode is brought to you by Marantz, makers of the ISA award-winning Model M1 streaming amplifier. Click the link below for more info. So the room I'm sitting in right now was first acoustically treated by Portugal's Vicoustic in 2023. And that was because the reverb in here was horrendous when I first moved in. I can hear it, you can almost certainly hear it as well through the microphone. Now reverb is caused by the reflective behavior of bare walls and a bare ceiling. So the sound comes out of the loudspeakers and sort of snookers around the room in a gazillion different directions to arrive at the ear, at the listening position, which is over here for me, it arrives late and distorted. And back in 2023, I could hear that reverb very clearly and I could measure it too. So I placed a room measurement microphone, I think it's called a Umic one, I placed that at the listening position and connected it to a MacBook Pro running Room EQ Wizard and then Room EQ Wizard generates some test tones that come out of your speakers, the microphone reads it and the resulting RT60 graph was an absolute car crash. It showed the reverb time for this room as sitting at roughly one full second. So really I think the overall takeaway here is that this room has a very very serious reverb problem. Now that is disgusting. So basically, if you don't know what an RT60 graph is, it shows you how long it takes for each frequency to decay by 60 dB. That's the sound over time. And ideally for a listening room, so not a studio, a listening room like this one, we want frequencies above 300 Hertz to have a decay time or a reverb time of around 300 milliseconds. And we don't aim for zero because we don't want to rob music of its life. We don't want a dead room. We want just a little bit of reverb just to give music a bit of life, but too much and you just get that sound that many people call echo. It's not, it's reverb and it makes everything just sound muddy and like I said before, absolutely disgusting. Also, reverb is short for reverberation. It is very much a mid-range and high frequency problem in the context of room acoustics. And below something called the Schroeder frequency, which varies from room to room, but usually sits between 100 and 200 hertz. We're not getting into that today. The room's behavior below the Schroeder frequency moves from reverberant to resonant. Now that resonant behavior is what gives us bass problems. And we are not talking about bass resonances today. We are concerned today with reverb in the mids and in the highs. So Vicoustic's first round of room treatments in 2023 made a huge difference to the reverb time of this room. In fact, it cut it in half. And we made a video about that at the time, and I'll link to it in the show notes below. And you'll need to watch that as, I guess, yeah, background to this video. However, even back then, I knew and Vicoustic knew that there was still, if you excuse the pun here, room for improvement. So. With a new RT60, a new reverb time of between 400 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds at the listening position, yeah, that wasn't bad, but it still wasn't quite what I have in Berlin. So my Berlin room tends to hover at roughly, I think now, 200 to 250 milliseconds above 
300 hertz. Now back here in Lisbon, the rear right corner of the room and the adjacent stairway that kind of goes upstairs were two years ago and up until very recently causing flutter echoes that sort of bled back into the room. And I guess also, yeah, the reflections coming off the wall up there and the ceiling up there were also causing problems. And also causing problems in the other end of the room, there's another stairway down there that leads to the front door and I was getting flutter echoes from there. Probably not quite as bad from a video talking perspective, but probably just as bad from a listening position perspective, which is over here. So yeah, I had two staircases to deal with and this sort of like ugly corner. It's not ugly to look at unless you consider acoustic panels to be ugly, but it was ugly in terms of sound quality and reverb. So yeah, when shooting these videos, I talk in the direction of the very corner that causes me acoustic problems still. And up until a couple of weeks ago, I could hear that reverb being generated by the corner coming back and landing on my microphone here. I use a lav mic that picks up sound from all directions. And this is what I love about YouTube. It not only provides an opportunity to show what the room looks like, but also what it sounds like. Mind you, if you have an untreated room, so bare walls and a bare ceiling, and no pictures and photographs and artwork on the walls, don't really count. Shelves a little bit, but not really. If you only have those, especially if you have a bare ceiling, you'll probably want to hide the sound of your room with a directional microphone, which most people, I think, on YouTube anyway, they mount to a C stand just out of frame up here and then they point it directly at their chests. So it only picks up the sound that's coming out of the, the subject's mouth. Now I have never played that game and you don't really have to go back too far in this channel's history, maybe 2019, something like that, to hear the sound of the room in Berlin on my lav mic. Now, at the end of last year, I made a few videos where I could hear how that corner there was adding reverb to the sound of my voice and bouncing back and hitting the microphone, right? And it bugged the crap out of me. So this year, I had Vicoustic come back to fit more acoustic panels to further reduce this room's reverb, but specifically tackle this corner. Now, unlike furniture, the acoustic properties of Vicoustics panels are known. This means they can be placed on the walls and the ceiling with predictable results. So first up, I'm looking up here, first up, Vicoustic put six more Cinema Round Premium, I think they're called panels, on the ceiling here, another row, and that's directly above the listening position, which is right there. Now they are absorbers and they are glued to the ceiling and no, they haven't fallen down at all. And then Vicoustic put two of those same Cinema Round premium types on the wall over here. So just next to my existing set of four panels and that I don't love the look of it, but there's not a lot can be really done. I would love four, but there's a cutout in the wall that kind of precludes that. And then they also put two more Cinema Round Premium on the ceiling at the bottom of the stairway, which is directly in front of me here. And then lastly, they put a quad of, I think they're called Wavewood Ultra Light Absorbers and Diffusers, I think they are. They were added to the wall on this side here. So I already had one, one set here and now I've got another set here. And then in the stairway itself, Vicoustic installed nine Vixagon VMT absorbers and they were only added to one side of the stairwell because obviously if it's bouncing backwards and forwards like that, you just need to stop this bounce here, right? And then six of those Vixagon VMTs were added to one side of the stairwell, stairway wall on this side of the room that leads down to the front door. 
Now I'll put links to each of these panels in the show notes below for those curious about each one's acoustic behavior. And I hope that the end result is as audible on my microphone today as it is or was measurable to me last week because I took some more measurements at the listening position last week. And this new 2025, no, I've got to go back. The first treatment in 2023 caused the RT60 to drop from one second to 450 milliseconds, roughly. I mean, you want an even RT60 as well. You don't want any sort of big peaks and dips either. So this second treatment, which was done a couple of weeks ago and is not nearly as extensive, pulled the RT60 down to 250 milliseconds. And that's more of a drop actually than I was expecting and a very welcome one at that because I do all of this to hear more, I guess, quality from the loudspeakers and less interference from the room. And this is essential for anyone like me reviewing hi-fi gear and wanting to do so reliably. But I guess I would still do this even if I weren't reviewing gear because it makes music sound so much clearer with the stereo image drawn between the loudspeakers having a much crisper focus. I think that's the way to describe it. And I also notice an uptick in the intelligibility of dialogue when watching movies and TV and YouTube and that kind of thing. So call me a room acoustics wanker if you like, but I will no longer listen to music in an untreated room. Yeah, I've noticed actually that I can raise my voice more easily with this corner now treated and not hear so much kind of coming back at me from, yeah, from the walls and the ceiling, yeah, reflecting the sound for more reverb. Yeah, it's much better. I can, this is the first time I've done a, a recording here in this position since having the room treated. Anyway, I'm rambling on. If you like this video, you know what to do. Please consider subscribing below and hit us up on Patreon for a month if you want to buy cameraman Olaf and me a cup of coffee to say thank you for this video. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Oh, and here are some additional thoughts that summarize what I've learnt from acoustically treating three different rooms in the last five years. So firstly, room correction software cannot help at all with a room's reverb issues. Number two, yes, furniture can help with reverb a little bit, but it's not in the same league as installing acoustic panels to the walls and to the ceiling. And anyone who tells you otherwise is just high on copium. Number three, the same goes for a rug whose absorption coefficient only really kicks into gear above one kilohertz. So yes, it will take a little bit of a zing out of the room, a little bit, but it's, not, it's nothing compared to what the ceiling treatments here have done to this room. Number four, yes, room treatments like mine are hugely visually intrusive. And five, they are also bloody expensive too. But if you're planning to drop 10K on a loudspeaker system, you'll want to set aside, I think, at least half of that for room treatment. And lastly, room acoustics is a huge topic, and I couldn't hope to cover all of it in a video like this.